Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. Today we will be taking a closer look at some of the event winning decks from OP07 to see what uh, the Asian part of our community is playing in their tournaments and what is also winning, what's the top end and this is where you can guys think for yourself if you want to invest your money in one of those decks. So. Basically, I have prepared some event winning decks for you guys and these are the decks that have just been um, the most uh, used ones. These decks have been spammed and these decks are also winning most of the tournaments. So, for the first deck, we have uh, Rob Lucci from OP07 and what is a deck does? Basically, you may trash the top two cards of your deck give up to one of your opponent's characters a minus one cost. Basically, this is your standard black effect. And if you guys take a closer look, we will see your um, standard, fairly standard black cards. There are some new cards which make this deck pretty, pretty strong. So for example, we have some already known cards. We are running uh, the uh, CP type package with Spandam, with Kaku, with the character Rob Lucci, with Spandine, with Kaku and with Stussy. This is your most common engine in this deck. Then we are running some staple black cards. We of course have the Sabo, we have Rebecca, we have Gecko Moria. These three cards will most likely always be in the top black decks. So if you like black, you will most likely already have these cards and uh, also agree that these are staples. For some new edition cards we have, as I've already said, Spandine. He basically uh, plays a, a four or lower cost character with CP in its type other than Spandine. So basically he plays Rablucci, he plays Khalifa, he plays not Kaku sadly. Uh, he could... Mm. The thing is, it's Spandine, so it's not Spandam. Basically, you can play Luchi, you can play Khalifa, you can play Spandam or Kaku, the new Kaku version. Um, he is uh, basically just a minus three cost for uh, a enemy card and he is a 2k counter, which is really good. Then we have a new Brook card on play and when attacking, give up to one of your opponent's characters minus one for this turn, then KO up to one of your opponent's zero cost characters. So basically he is in Moria range, he uh, is mm, fairly strong, I'd say he could be a good um, black staple to include, include like once or twice or maybe three times. Um, twice is like a solid number to include him because um, he helps you with the um, minusing and with the KOing. In early game, most of the times this will be a KO. With your leader effect, you give minus one for free, then you give minus one on play, so you could basically kill something with um, two cost for free. Basically, if you just play him and if you have already set something up, I mean, you have some cards. You have Turu, you have Helmepo, you have Khalifa, she gives uh, minus two and you also have the new Kaku, so basically you are all good. You also have the um, Ice Age card and the new Tempest Kick card, draw a card, then if your trash has 10 or more cards, give up to one of your opponent's characters minus free cost. This is basically like a more balanced version of Great Eruption. Um, they have learned and this is okay. It's like a CP9 type card, so you can search it with Spam Dam. Um, this is all right. And then we have uh, one of the new big boss monsters in this deck. This is Stussy. Um, she's a 9 cost, 9000 power character. On play, you may place one of your characters into the trash. KO up to one of your opponent's characters with no restriction. Basically, if you have something like Spandam on the field, or you have just played Helmepo, or you have just used Turu, whatever it is, you have just one character that you don't need. You could also just trash something like Rob Lucci if you really don't have anything else and get him back like later with Rebecca or with Spendime or with Moria. It really doesn't matter, honestly. So um, 
this is like insane. You can KO anything. You can play her and KO a tank cost mom. You can KO a tank cost whatever it is. So this is really, really strong. And for the last new card, we have the Opio 7 Secret, where one of those two, um, which is Sabo, and his effect is really, really strong. On play, you may trash one card from your hands. This is what Black most of the time wants to do either way. KO up to one of your opponent's cost of five or less characters, and additionally, up to one of your opponent's cost three or less characters. So he is like a Rob Lucci on steroids. I mean, yes, he is like double the cost, but he also has 9,000 attack. I mean, this is strong. I mean, you do not need to run four of him. That would be a bit too much. He has no counter and cannot be searched. He is strong. I mean, he really is strong. And the artwork is just straight up fire, like literally fire. And I like this card and I will play this Rob Lucci deck for sure, and I also think I will include him. Um, I think twice is like the good amount. Um, you also have another event card. Um, I will show it to you right now, guys. This is also really strong if you need like a a quick remove KO, um, but it's like an event. Uh, most of the times you want to play something like Kaku or Rob Lucci or Brook or Sabo because you have the you have the same effect where you KO something but you have another character so you basically go plus one the enemy goes minus one this is more worth than KOing with an event card but if you do not have any anything else or if this is like the last resort I mean this can work too um, I have another version here where you could also play the in his lobby stage cards I mean this helps because your leader has the CP type and you can just rest this card and give uh, one of your opponent's characters minus two. Uh, this is also something that can be included quite easily and it has a really good effect because giving just minus two for nothing, you honestly just ra uh, rage the stage, <laughs> rest the stage and give something minus two, then you're giving something minus one with your leader effect and there is uh, one enemy card which is already at minus three and we have some good ways to reduce we have tapis kick we have ice age we have like anything honestly so this works really well and um, this leader actually has won a lot of tournaments in Asia for the OPO 7 format as of now so this is definitely something uh, to look out. If you like black, you will most likely already have your playset of Luchi, of Moria, of Rebecca, of Sabo, of Kaku, Tsuru, Spandy. I mean, Helmepo and Tsuru, it's, those are cards where you could always say, I only need like two or three or uh, whatever. Uh, you will have your Ice Age, so you basically only need like the EB01 uh, uh, Brook, you only need the Spandine and the new Stussy card, the Kaku, Sabo, so basically this is um, this is like a medium investment, I mean Sabo is going to be a bit pricey at start, as well as going to be Stussy, 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 I'm not quite sure, um, so basically this is pretty solid if you already have a black deck it's going to be even more worth because you will already own a lot of these black cards so um, definitely keep an eye out on this one if you would like to start playing black in opio 7 definitely this this is your man uh, Rob Lucci is really really good really really good so coming up next this is just the same deck coming up next we have jewelry bonnie and this is your mono green uh, leader for opo7 we also had the mono black leader luchi um, her effect is also pretty interesting on opponent attacks once per turn you can rest one dawn and then rest up to one of your opponent's leaders or characters basically uh, your opponent will always have one less attack and also one more character rested than he likes so basically if your opponent has like a full board and he attacks with one character you can simply say no i'm resting your leader or i'm rest or i'm resting another character damn that's some lot of hours <laughs> that's some thumb breaker type spelling here um and she is really defensive on your opponent's turn, but really 
uh, aggressive on your turn because you are not only resting uh, the opponent and you are pretty much saying nah -ah to his effect you also have some characters that um, are making use of the uh, rested enemy characters you could play some more aggressive types where you KO something but this version is more of a fortress version if you guys remember from OP06 uh, the Yamato, the fortress Yamato version uh, this is something similar we are playing of course the supernova type characters we have Bonnie, we have Kit and we have the new Cavendish card from uh, yes it was EB01 where you basically just get two active Dawn back whenever he attacks and on play as well and we are also um, running the Doflamingo type package with our baby 5 searcher because we are running 2k counter viola, we are running uh, 2k counter baby 5 and we are also having the baby blocker Rosinante and we are having our big boss monster Don Quixote Doflamingo. Um, this is like a good mix of two, green has always mm, came quite good with the Don Quixote mix Basically, you could mix anything in green with Don Quixote. It's really that solid. It's that strong and this has also worked pretty well. This is like a early defensive game, but if you get to late game, I mean, this looks terrifying. I mean, just look at we have the 10 cost Doflamingo. We have the <laughs> the 9 cost Secret Rare Zoro from OP06, uh, which can attack three times. We have the <laughs> OP Jones himself, which can uh, rest two of your enemy characters and having rush. This is looking quite uh, menacing, honestly. So, in the early and mid game, you will have a lot of control. Also, do not forget about the the uh, pseudo blocker Captain Kid, which uh, your opponent has to target. But you have a lot of, like a lot of defensive power to actually block for him. So. Mm, this is like a solid green deck right here and also Bonnie has won a lot of tournaments this as well this was like a flagship in Japan so basically like straight up solid deck right here and uh, the the game plan with Bonnie is uh, getting as safe as possible through early and mid game blocking and trying to get your captain kid on field trying to protect him and while he's on the field you simply attack and clean out everything and in the late game you are trying to stomp your enemy with the Don Quixote card uh, the Doflamingo card and trying to finish the game off with Zoro or with Hody Jones and you have so much ways to get to late game you have your baby blocker Rosinante you have amazing 2k counters you have some solid surge you have um, a lot of dawn reinvestment so basically Cavendish gives you two active dawns um, nope this is not it uh, Euroach gives you uh, an active dawn at the end of your turn and Basil Hawkins is like a 7000 blocker and uh, he also has this good effect that if this character were to be removed from play by one of your opponent's effects you may rest up to one of your opponent's characters instead so you have a lot of defensive power also the Don Quixote event of course honestly we cannot forget about that um, so Bonnie is like your new Yamato fortress and she is really strong I mean she really is that strong um, this is also something if you like green if you already have uh, some green cards or if you would like to transition like get get rid of Yamato and maybe get into something new green uh, Jewelry Bonnie is really the deck for you or if you want to get into uh, the green deck uh, this is really it man it's nice you can get into green with Bonnie but it's going to be a bit more pricey compared to black honestly because if you look at this deck I mean you have Sabo you have Rebecca those are all staples but they're not too expensive Rablucci isn't expensive and honestly I mean Stussy will not be like a 20 dollar or 20 euro card same with Sabo this deck is like honestly not that expensive but if we look at Captain Kid as a 4 of oh he hurts he hurts quite a bit Zoro also hurts as a 3 of quite a bit I mean it's all right it's okay um, but it's it's not it's not cheap it's not overly expensive but you get the point basically 
uh, if green is your style, if you want to simply steamroll over your opponent in late game, bonings for you. And then I have two versions of Boa Hancock for you guys. This is your monocolor blue deck. Boa Hancock also pretty, pretty solid in Asia, also winning most of the tournaments um, with the seven wallets of the sea type package. So basically what is your effect, your turn, once per turn, you may activate this when a character leaves play for one of your abilities. If you have five or less cards, draw one card. This is pretty simple and you can manipulate this for uh, yourself uh, pretty easily because you have some cards like uh, the new crocodile where he says on play, uh, rest one down and then bounce a two cost back to the owner's hand. So you can basically bounce an enemy uh, card if you need to get rid of this or you can bounce your cards back to your hand. And we have some, some good uh, options to do that. I mean, we have something like Pudding where activate main return this card to the owner's hand. I mean, this is straight up made for Boa Hancock basically. Um, you could also just uh, play your uh, Wallet Searcher and then bounce him back. You could also just play the uh, Kaido version, not this version. Actually, you have the tank cost OP04 version where you can uh, return in an 8 cost, I think. Let me let me check it double. Ah, oh, no, it's not in this deck list. Never mind. I think you can uh, return an 8 cost and you can return a 3 cost um, to the owner's hand. So you can basically return a big body from your enemy and you could return a small body from uh, your board. Like if you need to replay the searcher or if you need to replay the Don Quixote blocker or whatever it may be. So you have some um, um, some possibilities to do that. And we are also running the new uh, Warlord uh, package. We have Jinbei. He basically uh, plays another four cost seven Warlords type of the sea from your hand. So you play Jinbei, then you play like Crocodile, or you play Weevil, draw a card, or you play Trafalgar Law and you trash in, uh, one of your opponent's type characters, or you play defensive and try to rearrange your top deck with Don Quixote Do Flamingo, or you. Now you cannot play Pudding, she's no wallet. Uh, you could play Moria and return something from your hand or you can uh, set up your Mihawk. There is a lot of combo potential in this deck and you are also quite defensive because we are running the new Boa Hancock where she actually like um, freezes, let's say she freezes another uh, character because uh, this character cannot attack uh, in the next turn. It's not like Don uh, Do Flamingo where he actually freezes the character and he cannot get active from from the refresh, refresh phase, but um, Boa Hancock uh, rather uh, just doesn't let the card attack. So if you play her, target one enemy, the card can still be active, but it cannot attack. So there is a big difference to that. Um, we are also having some event cards, the Red Rock to place just one character to the bottom like whatever thread it may be it's just gone and we are also having the new seven drop event card gravity blade raging tiger you can place up two characters with a cost of six or less on the bottom of their owner's deck in any order so this is like a a, a big help for some for some um, bad scenarios where the enemy just spams their board and we are also running uh, this pudding you I mean, you do not have to run her, but it's quite strong. Uh, you can run her like a two or three of, or maybe even just one of if you really want her. Uh, basically, this is the pudding where your opponent returns all of their hand cards to their deck and shuffles their deck and then drawing uh, five new cards. This is like a hand destroyer. If you play like an, uh, against another bl uh, blue or green deck, this is, this is like terrifying. This is like, honestly, it's so bad. For the enemy, for you it's insane, but for the enemy this is like a nightmare. Um, and we are also running like the 9 cost Mihawk, uh, pretty sound effect, you are bottom decking something insane, and the 7 cost Doflamingo, you simply return something bad from the enemy. This is like a solid uh, blue deck, it really does all blue, <laughs> actually does. You are returning or bottom decking something, you are drawing and you have 
straight up big bodies on the field and you are just doing blue you are just actually being and doing blue and i think that boa hankook is actually this card i think this is like honestly a bit too much see she's only a six cost having eight thousand and such a good effect i mean what for six ton you get an eight thousand character this character also uh, freezes like another character and you can place up to one cost or all as character on the bottom of its own deck like what this is insane this is really insane and i think jimbe right here this he is like your your key card he makes this deck so good he makes this deck insane never mind um it is like a solid blue deck if you like blue if you play blue boar is is there for you and this is also it's it's not that mm, it's not that uh, expensive honestly i mean we are looking at three times uh mihawk here i'm not quite sure uh if he's going to uh, raise or fall price wise but all the other cards they're not that expensive honestly and th uh, these will be some some staple secret whereas this is not an expensive deck you can just play this card i mean this Kaido is changeable with the other tank cost Kaido from OP04, but this is pretty much solid price wise. So, if you're also looking for a Nike, uh, maybe just a little bit over your budget price deck, uh, this is it. So, you also have the um. Uh, let's say the the rearrangement version of this deck where people are actually running the Sanji from OP06 Where you can actually reveal the top card and with uh, With it being a nine cost or lower you can then play it So you have something like Mihawk as you play Sanji and then Mihawk Then you have something like Sanji and Soga King or Sanji and Whitebeard or whatever uh, not Whitebeard uh, Ace Whatever it may be, I think this deck is not as strong as this uh, straight up uh, Warlords deck, but I think it was uh, quite uh, quite uh, interesting. This is why I just wanted to show you guys there is another way of playing this. I think it's it's not that strong, honestly. I think the pure uh, the pure Warlord type version is a bit better, but. Depending what you like and what not, this could also be interesting. And there is some little spice I also wanted to show you guys. This is just something if you really want to and if you are really, really interested in it. But there is a really interesting version of the Zoro and Sanji leader deck. Basically, you have the same uh, type, like you have the same deck as Boa Hancock right here. But this works just really, really good. Like you have the blue uh, uh, pool where you can play all the new blue wallets type, but you also have green. So you have access to the green um, Tankos Dofi. He is your seven wallets of the sea. So there is no problem with that. You have access to green Dracula Mihawk. He is also seven wallets of the sea. No problem with that. But there is just... This is like a really spicy deck because the, uh, the effect says uh, you may return one of your characters with a cost of two or more to the owner's hand and then set up one of your characters with 7000 power or less as active. So basically you return something like your Sengoku or you return something, uh, you only can return actually something like Sengoku, but with Mihawk in play you can you can combo really really well with Jinbei, with Jinbei. So basically, if you play Jinbei, you are playing Mihawk from hand, then you can activate this effect because if you have two or less characters, um, this actually works. Works playing Jinbei, then playing Mihawk, and then playing either Weevil or Crocodile or Mihawk or that's it. <laughs> or your law. He is also a focus. So this is something uh, serious. This is actually something serious. You are drawing a lot with uh, Weevil. You are cycling a lot with Mihawk. You can rearrange your deck with the Doflamingo. You are spamming your board with Jinbei and with 
Crocodile, you are searching your um, desired cards with Sengoku and you can trash out your opponent's uh, hand size with Trafalgar Law and of course the events we have Perfume Fumer, this is basically like a Diable Jambe for blue. Um, your card gains plus uh, 2000 and your opponent cannot activate blocker when the selected card attacks. There was also a better wording for this uh, type of card, so they have learned from Diable Jambe. And you have also You Can Be My Samurai, this is like a tech card where you just read two of your characters, like you, you can play like two Sengokus or I don't know, uh, have like uh, any other card like Bartholomew Kuma and you just simply rest them and draw two cards. This is honestly all right because these characters do not do anything. And um, if you if you rest even something like a four cost uh, wallet type character, it's not that big of a deal if this card gets uh, destroyed because you can get it back with Gecko Moria from your trash. And this is just uh, a good spice to draw even more cards. So keep that in mind. This is just another spicy deck. I mean, I'm not saying that Zoro and Sanji are worth to invest in OP07, but this is just... I have been looking for some solid Boa Hancock decks and then I found this one and I thought, damn, this is this is like really spicy. This is like, if you do not want to play only blue, like, hmm. I really thought this was funny. This is like a, a little extra, like a little bonus, but uh, do not take me for this one. I mean, it got first place, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I mean... Whoever it was, whoever it was who came up with this great idea, I mean, he was cooking, honestly. But this is just a um, fun little extra I wanted to show you guys. So basically, if you're looking for a strong blue deck in OP07, you are uh, really uh, going to play uh, Boa. If you're looking for a strong green deck, you are going to play Barney. And if you're looking for a strong black deck, you are going to play Rob Lucci. This is basically like this is the top three, uh, uh, top three um, standard uh, colors we have there. I mean, red and yellow are also having uh, some good decks. We all know that NL is up there. We all know that Katakuri is up there, and we also all know that there will be the black and yellow uh, Luffy from the starter deck. Uh, but I think this is just from uh, from the OPO7 alone, just the blank leaders. Um, if you want to look for new OPO7 uh, cards and decks, these are the cards and the decks you are looking for. So basically guys, if you found something interesting and if you are going to pick one of those decks, please let me know. Let, uh, let me f uh, know what you think about them. And if you guys enjoyed this video, then please leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in another video. Peace.